Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, so yesterday we gave out uh, three uh, daily free picks. Uh, we finished one and two. Um, went back over the games as I always do. Not only you know the ones I win, but especially the ones I lose. Um, definitely nothing that I would change about the picks yesterday. And specifically, the game that we won, the football game, that was the weakest play of the three. It was still obvious, obviously a strong play, and I really liked it. I said yesterday there was a ton of value, but that was like the weakest of the three. That was the last one that I, I, I brought back in um, when I, I was trying to decide between you know which one to give you guys, and I ended up giving all three, but that was, that was the odd man out. Um, the best value yesterday uh, was Chicago, that, the under in that game. And I don't know if you guys watched that game, but that's a heartbreaking way to lose. Like we had that and a pass ball scores a run. So, I mean, whatever. It could have been a hit. It could have been a home run. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But losing on a, on a pass ball, not fun. So, I mean, you know, if he blocks a pass ball, we could go 2-1 and one yesterday. But, again, there's no sense dwelling on the pass, guys. We're going to have bounces like this. It's funny in sports betting. You always remember, you know, when a ball doesn't bounce your way, but you don't really remember when your team hits a grand slam walk-off home run to cover for you, right? We don't remember that. Or, you know, those last-second touchdowns we get, we don't remember that. We only remember the bad stuff, but that's okay. I promise you guys, the laws, laws of probability mean just as much good stuff's going to happen to you as bad stuff. It just feels like a lot more bad stuff happens in sports. So... um Yesterday in football, though, as I mentioned in that game, um, I mean, right from the beginning, I said it, it looked like Vegas wanted money on Carolina, and they did. And this game shows you just how good Vegas is. I mean, they executed this absolutely perfectly. Okay, so they, they set this line six and a half, and the money just kept pouring in on Carolina. As I said yesterday, guys, there was like no money, like one of the lowest amounts of money I've ever seen on a football team. On Tampa Bay, there was no faith in Tampa Bay on their defense on to score against Carolina. There was zero faith, so everything was going on Carolina. But obviously, Vegas thought Tampa Bay was a little bit better than the public did. And like I said, guys, even there was a lot of sharps on Carolina. I just I couldn't I couldn't get on that side. It looked too much like Vegas wanted the money there because they weren't moving that line. If they had moved that line, I wouldn't even have bet on the game. But they kept the line there for so long. Um, and then right on game day, and this, this kind of solidified the pick for me. I mean, along with all the other things, but this solidified the pick right on game day, they moved the line a half point to draw a little bit of action the other way. Cause what Vegas isn't looking for is to get killed. They're looking for their sweet spot, which when they have a big advantage, they want 65, 70% of the money on the wrong side. They don't want 90% of the money on the wrong side, believe it or not, because at the end of the day, they don't want to get crushed on a game, okay? No, Vegas doesn't like getting crushed on games. I mean, obviously, they're they're always going to win long-term, but they hate getting crushed on games. So their, their magic number, when they're like certain of an advantage, is they want, again, you know, to have the um, 65, 70% of the money on the wrong side. And amazingly, that's pretty much what they ended up with. Yesterday, there was only, th well, it was at like 11% of the money or less. I think even 9% of the money at one point was on Tampa Bay. Once they moved that line, some money came in on Tampa Bay. Definitely some smart money came in late. Um, yet they still didn't move that line back. Um, anyways, so it ended up with 32% of the money uh, that closed came in on Tampa Bay. So um, at 32%, if, if Vegas wins, you know, they win 68% six, uh, of the money, okay? If they lose, if they lose those games, 38% is not horrible because they're picking up the juice on top of that. So, you know, they stand to have a massive, massive win, but they don't stand to have a huge loss, okay? I mean, their, their losses will be minimized by the juice, but if they're if they get the public to bet on the wrong side, such as they did in this case, and they won 68% of the money. That's huge. Plus the juice. Anyways, guys, that's enough about that. So um, today we're going back to football. Um, I mean, talk about a swing here. Yesterday, 
it was just, there was value absolutely everywhere. Like, everywhere. I mean, it, it sucked to lose those games. Um, side note, Strowman did exactly what I said he would do. Like, Strowman is a god when it comes to under umpires. He knows how to work them. I don't know if you watch it. Like, he was dancing on the outside of the strike zone. Like, he pitched an amazing game. I just didn't expect Young to have a blow up and have his worst game of the year. But anyways, so that went right. We just ended up losing. But um, yesterday, there was value everywhere. Like, I, I love the Mets under. I like I love the Chicago under. The football game was great. Like, there was just so much value. There was like seven other games that I got down on. And like, tons of value. Today, value is fleeting. It's sparse. There's not much value out there. Um, very little in baseball. Like, I think I have one bet in baseball. Um, college football. Yeah, but, luckily for us, one game jumped out where there is a lot of value. So um, that is back in the Canadian Football League, the good old CFL. So um, one game going tonight, it is the Ottawa Red Blacks against the BC Lions. So Ottawa used to be called the Rough Riders. Um, now, again, there's not that many teams in the CFL. Um, and I think there's nine. Is that right? Nine? I'm not going to count it. I think there's nine teams. And there was two teams called the Rough Riders. So they had to come up with a new name. Now, being that there's only nine teams in the league, they could get really creative. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, call them the Destroyers. Like, there's not a lot of names taken. So, I mean, you have your free pick of whatever name you want. So, naturally, management sat down in a room and got together and, and they came out and they settled on Red Blacks. That's the color of their uniform, red and black. So now they're the Red Blacks. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. CFL, bet, CFL betting is highly emotional. You think I talk about how important emotion and psychology is in NFL betting? Okay, well, CFL is even crazier. You have, you have absolute diehard fans um, that always bet on their team, but you have like this so-called like CFL football, you know, analysts and aficionados, and they're, they're so stuck on short-term trends, it's ridiculous. So what you end up finding is you find a ton of value emerging for underperforming teams. Now, in this particular game, both these teams are underperforming teams, but one of the teams um, has a fair advantage in this game, and I'll go through that in a second. So right off the bat, um, Ottawa is the underdog in this game. They opened at a seven-point underdog, and... It's been, the betting's about 50-50. Uh, actually, 54% of the money, or sorry, 54% is important. 54% of the bets have come in on BC. So more bets have come in on BC. But 78% of the money's come in on Ottawa. Um, that's huge. That's a huge difference, okay? So 54% of the bets, but that means only 22% of the money is on BC. Um, BC is... 1 and 10. That's their record. They have one win and 10 losses. They've lost seven, seven games in a row. Now, Ottawa is not much better. But I will give you, I will give Ottawa this. Ottawa, Ottawa battles. Okay? They battle. Every time they get smashed, they come out firing next game. Now, last game was a really an emotional game for Ottawa. Um, they played their cross province rivals in Toronto and the Toronto Argonauts are like second worst team in the league. They were, I think going into that game, they were like one and nine or something. And they absolutely smashed Ottawa last week, smashed them 46 to 17. It was embarrassing for Ottawa. Considering that rivalry, it was an embarrassment. Um, I think, I really think Ottawa shows up today. I, I think they do. I mean, you know, they're, they're playing in BC. BC is an atrocious team, but they have, Ottawa looks at this as an opportunity to atone for what happened last week. Um, and, and I honestly, I think they get this done. Now, Vegas, because of all that money coming in, they've dropped a line to five and a half. Five and a half, I'm, I'm happy. Um, and what I'm going to do in this particular case is um, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take a half and half position. So our, our, our play as we're, we're posting is going to be uh, Ottawa, Red Blacks, Ottawa Red Blacks, plus five and a half. But 
that's only going to be um, like, let, let's say, you know, you guys want to make this, uh, you know, a two unit player, four unit or whatever, you know, your bankroll management is and, and that you want to stick to that. But take half of what your bet size is and take it at plus five and a half and then take the other half and throw it down on the money line because the money line right now you're getting plus 200. This, this, there's a lot of value at plus 200. Um, as I said, you know, BC's won one game this year. So they won one game, lost 10, and we're going to get plus 200. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do that. So again, guys, in, in terms of, we talk, we talk about value. So, you know, we're comfortable betting this all the way down to, I'd say plus 175 below plus 175. It come, becomes just convoluted in terms of the value and everything, but at, at, you know, plus one seventy five or higher. Like if your if your book right now is at um, five and a half, the line should be like plus two hundred, right around there. Plus one ninety five, plus two hundred. Um, I got it plus two hundred and plus five and a half. But again, as money continues to come in on Ottawa, those lines may drop. Um, I said yesterday, guys, important not to play like you know um, lines that move. With this, in the, the CFL is a wild game. I like five and a half. If you're getting five, that's fine. I would bet this down to four and a half. Um, there's single points in Canadian football. So those like, you know, four points is, you know, it matters as, as opposed to, you know, just having three points. Like three and a half in the NFL is like that, you know, deciding factor of which way to bet sometimes for the public. But there's single points in the CFL. So those half points are in consequence. Or sorry, the the milestones like you know three and seven they're not as important so anyways guys i i like it at five and a half but i bet it all the way down to four and a half so if it drops between now if more smart money keeps coming in on ottawa and it goes down to four and a half that's fine bet it um but what we're gonna do guys so our, the play we're posting today is um the red blacks plus five and a half that's our official play but what i've done guys is i've taken I've taken half the bet that I would normally put down on the spread. It's not an additional bet. It's half of what my one bet would be. And I'm putting that down on the money line plus 200, guys, because there's absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way that's good, that should be a plus 200, okay? Zero, zero way. So tons of value there. Uh, we like the five and a half, guys, because, you know, the CFL is a funny game, so we'll take the five and a half points. Um that's it, guys. I mean, I, I look at I look at games like this, and um, you know, even the football game yesterday, like the the football game yesterday, this game where you know it's just it's it's a lot of it is just about kind of misleading the public, you know. So yesterday yesterday's football game, I, I'm not going to go on much longer, um, but yesterday's football game, guys. One of the things that that really kind of came to mind when I watched that game. So again, you have like 90% of people betting on one side, 90% of the money on one side of this game. And it reminded me of an uh, important thing in sports betting. And that's an old, like, it's a Mark Twain saying. I'm sure you guys, most of you guys are familiar with Mark Twain. That it ain't what you know that gets you in trouble. Uh, it's what you, oh, no, I totally screwed that up. Oh, I should stick to sports betting. I should stick to sports betting. This this is a good. I I, I had this. Um, I had this at my at my work. Uh, like years ago, someone had put up on the wall, and like it just kind of came to me the other day. And this, I don't didn't remember exactly what it said, but th this is what it actually said. Uh, it ain't what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you think you know for sure that just ain't so. And that's that's pretty inspiring. So. Um, you know, basically, you know, it's not the, it's not the stuff that you don't know that gets you in trouble. Cause when you don't know, you, you know, you don't bet it. It's the stuff that you think, you know, for sure. And that's what yesterday's football game was guys. Um, people thought they knew for sure with Carolina and it just wasn't so anyways, guys, we're on the CFL red blacks plus five and a half, half our bet on the money line plus 200. Um, as always guys, I wish you a very lucky day. Take care.